Hello and welcome to another X-Ray Tech video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about transitioning between a manual process and an automated process. First, your automated process really should be very similar to your manual process. So if you're creating something right now and it takes a few manual steps, what that automated process should do is automate some of those manual steps. Now, they're not categorically new things, they are the automated versions of the things that you're already doing. So when you're constructing these automated systems and you start to transition from your manual process into an automated process, the best way to go about it is to run both systems at the same time. And as they run in parallel, you'll start to see the different data types or the different scenarios that your manual process accounts for because it's a human, right? And your automated process will work for one really specific scenario. So as you mature that automated infrastructure, you'll be able to spot errors and adapt to different data points that are coming in in your automated system. One really useful step is just to announce the fact that this automation ran on your favorite chat application. So for us, we use Slack and we have a channel called Auto Updates. So every single automation that runs announces the fact that this particular automation ran and it moved and did this specific thing with the data, right? This uh, invoice was just paid or this person just uh, reached out as a new lead. So all of those types of announcements really help you understand, you know, what automation is running, when, what information is being moved with that automation and what, if any, human steps are required after the fact. Now, when you make the transition, you're gonna to wanna to keep an eye on the automation very, very closely. And that's because when you construct an automation, you build that automation with very specific test data. And that test data has certain criteria inside. So when you turn the automation on and you start to actually use the system that you made, those uh, criteria and those data points inside of the real automated system, as you're, you're going through these processes, could have a missing data point or a different type of a data point that is from real use. And that could throw errors or be unexpected for your automation to try to handle. So you'll need to go back and tweak and debug and, and really handle that. That's why running both processes in parallel, the automated one and the manual one, will help you identify some of those fringe cases and help you expand the happy path so they say, uh, so you can make the automation, the automated system a lot more inclusive and adaptable to all of the other data types and scenarios that you encounter every day in your manual process. So I hope this video has been helpful. As always, links and resources are in the description down below. And don't forget, keep the flow.